Well, I'm here this morning at Bristol Shipwrights, and uh, this is a great day because we're going to start planking the second layer on uh, this 43-foot uh, Alden schooner that we're building. And, uh, you know, the first layer, we've gone over all of this stuff. It's strip planked, and uh, I think it's fantastic because the second layer of planking is a little bias across the strip plank, and so it doesn't have a continuity, you know, of planking seams or anything. Yeah, I, I just think it's fantastic. Uh, you know, it lined off really nicely with a magic line, and we've got it all divided from there up. All that planking is going to be cut from a pattern on the bench. It, uh, it's what I would call a saw pattern, because we're going to use the pattern to saw the plank. Down here, it's a little bit different. We're making patterns down here, and uh, we had different choices when we lined this off like this. We could have made these lines perfectly straight. We could have done all kinds of different things, but... Basically what we did was we came from up forward with some parallel planks, they're five inches wide, and we ran one back into two planks here, I would call those steelers, and the next one down, so we've got two planks running into four, and then we've got three planks below that, and then the garbage. And uh, today I just wanted to show you how we make these patterns. There is no straight edge. The keel isn't straight, not perfectly straight, we tried to make it straight when we cut the rabbit out, but it has warped a tiny bit as it's seasoned in different things, and I've touched it up with a rabbit plane and just tried to get it to be, you know, a very nice, graceful uh, line of travel so it's easier to cut the piece out, and uh, these curves are nice and graceful. Basically, we're going to spile onto this pattern. Now, I wanted to compare for you guys the way that I do it, and the way it's been done in the past, I mean, it's been taught many, many times, uh, spiling with a pair of dividers. Now, you know, say I wanted to pick up a point. Uh, let's, let's try it right here. Now, I'm not going to make a dock line here because I don't have a pencil in my dividers. And uh, if you had a pencil in there, it would be your absolute enemy because it just keeps getting dull and it obliterates your accuracy completely. So, no good, you know. So, what I would want to do if I wanted to make a spiling from that line right there. Uh, I would take this and set it at, say, four inches. It really doesn't have to be set at a particular measurement, but it's nice if you know it's at four inches. So I'm going to put that right in the same little spot, and I'm going to draw one little radius down here. Now, you can't see it, but it's on the pattern. Now, if I wanted to transfer that back from the pattern onto the piece I'm going to cut, all I have to do is pick that radius up and make a cross right there, and then pick it up over here and do the same thing, and it's back where I started. That's a standard spiling. You know, there's other ways of doing it, which I kind of like better, and that would be the same pair of dividers. You'd put the dividers on the line, and then you make one quick little radius right there. And then when you're going to go ahead and transfer that onto your pattern, you just pick the highest spot right there and make another little radius back there, and that's kind of where you started from. When you nail your batten down or whatever you do, you're considering, again, just like I did here, the height of that little radius only. It's not a cross thing, you know, so you can do it different ways. You can use a little round disc. You can use a spiling block where you would put, line a block up with the line and make a mark and all kinds of different stuff. You know, one of the things that's been done uh, quite often is people would take a pattern like this and then cut strips of plywood and glue them on there with hot glue, the same as I've done here. And uh, it, that works pretty good, but, uh, you know, the, the problem I have it with it, with it is, is that I'm going to use this pattern a little differently than most people. When I put it on the material, I'm going to put this face of the pattern down on my material. Because I'm going to cut the material out from the back side rather than from this side. So, basically, this works out really nicely. And all of these other methods that I showed you, whether it's a block spiling, a disc spiling, you know, a spiling with a pair of dividers or whatever else, it puts all the mocks on this side of the pattern. And I don't want that because it doesn't do me any good when I get to the bench. So, I take these little tags uh, and, uh, you know, sometimes I... I just poke a razor knife in the line and push the tag up to the razor knife. I'll, I'll bend them so they're kind of like a little outrigger. I'm going to show you exactly how to do that when we make this pattern. After we cut this, I'm going to make this pattern and cut that plank too. So, you know, I've got my little pattern here. 
I'm going to show you how I put it down, face down on the material and then mock it out on the back side of the goblet plank that I'm going to cut. Now, two other things about this. This is a spiling. This end of the plank uh, of the pattern is a spiling and the other end of the plank up here is a fit pattern. I fit it actually right to the rabbit so it fit perfectly and then made sure it fit right to the line and it's tapered right out to a point which is fine with us because it's going to be glued, that plank is going to be glued to the next plank. We're not worried about these tapered ends that are problems or problematic say when you're caulking a boat with caulking, uh, you know, cotton caulking or oakum or something like that. So, you know, this is going to work out really nicely. So basically all I want to do really is remove it here Let's see, I got my hammer right here. It took me a while to find that. And uh, pull that nail. And this nail. One here. And one here. And I'm being careful not to let the pattern slide around because I don't want to bend up my tags. So now I'm going to take the pattern. And there it is right there, just like that. I'm going to put it overhead and put it right on top of my material right over here, just like that. Okay, so here I am at the bench, and uh, I've got my pattern up here on top of my material. We cut this piece of material out uh, a little bit large. Uh, we need it to be at least a half an inch or three quarters of an inch bigger than the material, and you'll see why, to guide the saw. So, you know, I've set it down on here. I've got it. This was against the boat. This side was against the boat. So I'm setting it down on the back side of the goblet plank. And all I'm going to do is just take a hammer and nails, and just tack it on there so it doesn't slide around. And it doesn't take much. Just a little bit like that, and I'll stick one in the middle. Yeah, three tacks, just like that. Now, my paper tags right here. Uh, laying right down on the goblet, just as perfectly as can be. I don't have any error or anything to consider. That is the position that fits into the corner, you know, where the rabbit is, and, uh, you know, it's accurate. So I can just take a pencil, make a little mark right there at the edge of the paper tag, and I'm going to put a little trailer on it, because otherwise I might have a hard time finding it. So, very simple. Like that, little trailer. Like that. Little trailer, one here, one here. This part was a fit pattern, so I can trace it right out, and I'm going to make sure I don't bend it at the end when I trace it. Got to be careful up here. And that's all. Just like that. So I got a little trailer there, one there. Let's go right down this end. One there. One there. So this is the simplest thing in the world. Now this pattern is great because we're going to use this exact same pattern, same tags and everything on the other side of the boat. We're just going to put this away when we're done with it. And uh, we won't even take the paper tags off. Later on we'll peel them off when we're using it on the other side and put them on the other side of the pattern. That's basically it. So, you know, it, it, uh, they won't be exact, but they'll be very, very close, actually. Now I'm going to mark it at the stern end here where it fits up against the keel and the stern post. That's it. And we are done with the pattern. So I'm going to pull the nails and we're going to put the pattern away. We've got a batten tacked down along the line. It's like three-eighths of an inch outside of exactly where we're going to cut. And uh, that's the same batten that we drew the line on the boat with. So we know it makes the same kind of a set and everything, you know. And uh, if you can use the same batten over there as you can use over here, you're better off. And uh, it works out pretty well. Now, this is going to be cut at 90 degrees. So there's no progression of bevel in it whatsoever. That's going to come in a little bit later and quite a bit of it. So, you know, this is what we got going on right now. Uh, the only thing I want to do before I do get started is I want to take this little strip of wood and put it right over here to support the saw when I get going. And the other thing I want to do 
is take our hold downs and we're gonna put that right in there and hold that thing right down nice and tight. Now, we can't get them too tight because the pattern's kind of hanging off the side of the stock. So, just like that. I'm actually going to move this one a little tiny bit. And that's it. Okay. I'm going to pick up this saw. Slam it up against the batten. And make sure that my guard is up to start. And we're not plugged in. So now all we have to do is pick up the saw and follow the batten. And we can watch it as it goes by the marks to see if it's cutting the marks in half. Usually it'll cut that pencil mark right in half, just as perfectly as can be. And, uh, you know, I don't think we'll ever have to touch that cut up with a plane or do anything like that. So here we go. Now, to make the cut on the other side, I have to turn this piece around because I'm only going to cut from right to left. So, you know, the way the saw works, I can't cut this side without turning this piece around. So, I'm just going to do it just like that. Set it back down on the bench. And this is going to end up down here somewhere. Now, I've got a lighter batten this time, and the reason why I'm going to use it is because this line could have a little bit of waviness to it, like I had said. I kind of tuned it up with a rabbit plane, and uh, it worked out pretty nice, but we can use a flexible batten, and it's liable to come out. Just as wavy as it is on the boat. That's what we're after. We're going to make it fit. So, I'm going to nail these down just a tiny bit heavy this time. All right. And I could put one. What do we got up there? I can put one here. Right. That's good enough. Just to hold it still. Now, let's go down this end. A couple down here. I've got my little spacer. Because this is how far that the saw cuts from the line. Find my marks here. Wherever they are. Well, this is a fit pattern up here. Oh, I see it right here. Just like that. I'm going to check it out right in here. And I can see that wave in that shape because I know my marks are accurate and this one's a little bit further away than these. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull the batten over to myself a tiny little bit right there. Attack it just like that. Check it one more time. That's good. And I've got one more nail to put down at the end right down here. This is, yes, right about like so. Okay, there you go. Now, this is another one that's going to be cut at 90 degrees. So, no change of bevel, but... Like I said, we're going to be doing that. We're going to be getting into that just a little bit later. So I've got a little platform to lay my saw against here, especially up at this very narrow end. And uh, I'm just going to hold that thing down by hand in front of myself. Well, you know what we'll do? We'll put a bench dog on it. How's that sound? Just lightly. That's 
that's okay. That's going to work. All right. Raise my guard here. My saw in place before you get started. Check everything out. Nice and careful. Looks good. Now, when you get going doing this stuff, you try to make it kind of like memory. And uh, you, know, you put the saw in the same spot every time. You get your hammer in the same spot every time. You know, remove the same, the nails the same direction, all that kind of stuff. Because otherwise you get mixed up and start losing everything and all kinds of stuff like that. You get a, rid of your scrap as soon as you can. And uh, we have our little guide piece right here. I'm going to keep that on the bench. And I'm going to turn this around again the other direction. Now, I'm going to take a saber saw and cut this with a saber saw right here. So, because I know I'm going to have to plane it a little tiny bit, so. And there you have it, one garbage plank cut. Now we'll see how it fits. Maybe have to tune it up a tiny bit, but if we do, it'll be very, very little. So the next thing for us to do is to clamp it into position, and we're gonna show you how we go about that. We're just gonna clamp this garbage into position, and uh, we're gonna clamp it across because we can. Now. Not everywhere on this boat can you do this. We'll be able to do the next planks, clamp the ends, but as you get up in here, you obviously can't clamp it like this because uh, you can't get it the other side. So we're gonna come up with a whole new system here. We've already come up with that system. We're gonna show you that in a little bit here, but let's see how well it fits here. Well, I can't put a fingernail in it anywhere, so it's pretty tight. Very good. Let's see. Let's see right back here. I have a little feeler right here that I can use to just kind of stick in there. It's got a tiny space right there and it runs out right here. So I know it's got a lump in it from here to here. And we're not talking about the plank itself, we're talking about the boat. But I can take it down and take a quick peek at it and see if I can see the lump, whether it's in this piece or in this piece. And I'll just tune that up a little bit and it'll just fit down that much tighter. Now I'm just going to check it at the end. It's perfectly tight. No tune-up required. So let's unclamp it. I'll do this tiny little bit of adjustment and we're going on to the next plank. Well, our next move here is to make a pattern of the next plank. And, uh, you know, it's pretty simple. We've already got the patterns kind of cut out, roughed out to shape here. And uh, did a real nice job there. Pretty. We're just going to put it up in position here. And uh, kind of where it was when he planned it out, stick it on there anywhere, really. Just like that. Just a couple of tacks in it there. Like that. Now, the tags, these are file tags, that's all they are, you know, for files. And, uh, you know, I'll take and fold them a little tiny bit because it makes them kind of like a little outrigger. They have a little rigidity to it instead of just curling up. And uh, then I just take it my fingers and you see it slides up and down. You make contact, but it still slides around. I'll push it up to that plank and stick it right on right there. And I don't know if anything could be more accurate than that. 
That works good. It's kind of quick. It's very reasonable. Done. I'm going to put one right in this corner right here. Like that. Another one I'm going to put right there. See if I can get it right. Yeah. Just like that. Probably only need two here, but I'll probably put three. I'm going to put one right at the very top, like that. And I'm going to rip this part right off of it and turn it around and put it in the middle, like that. Yes, sir. These can be placed anywhere. They don't have to be on any particular schedule or anything like that. Just anywhere. You know, if you, if you weren't looking straight in at the line right here, you'd have a hard time getting that tag on exactly the right spot. So, you know, right now I'm, I am facing it like this, so it's working out pretty good. But if I were in any other position, it would be a little difficult. So what I do is I take a razor knife and I stick it in the line like that. And then I have something to push my tag up against like that and it becomes a one man operation there. I'll put the knife down to the next one, stick it in there, fold my tag a little bit so it's got a little rigidity, you just hold one corner, slide it up against the razor knife blade and stick it in place just like that. Let's do another one right here. Now Ken's just eyeing his end and that'll work out just fine too. You know, in some positions, like I said, you would have to do this with the razor knife, but not in every position. I like doing it. I think it just makes it easier for me. One there. All right, now. Let's move up forward a little tiny bit here. The very forward end of it is a fit pattern. So we're just gonna position it where we want it. And then I'm gonna draw a line right here at the end of it, right here. I'm gonna cut the thing off right here before we nail it up there, just like that. Okay, let's set it right on the bench right here. This eighth inch material is so easy to work with. You can cut it with a razor knife and just pop it right off there like that. Now, get a few more nails. I'm going to tack this one in place. Yep. Now we'll get the tags on it and then we'll put it behind it. Okay. Position it where you want it. Okay. Just like that. Let me move this nail up. Like that. And just wanted to hold it up here. Now this one is fit to the rabbit line, but it's not fit to that top line. So I noticed that there's a little bit of a discrepancy in it right in here. I had been planing in there. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a tag right there because I'm just going to, I can see that tag sticking out from behind the pattern a little bit. And I know I'll have to make it a little bit bigger there. You think it's good enough up there? Well, it's up. I can either put a tag on it or... Well, it's going to be so flexible no matter what we do. I'd push it up. I'd push it down and, and we're going to just add a little bit to the end and let the batten take care of the rest of it. Yeah, that's all right. We've extended the pattern and we fit it to the rabbit or very, very closely. It doesn't have to fit perfectly at the very end because the piece that we're going to cut is going to be so flexible. So it has to fit everywhere else. We tagged it up here because the pattern didn't fit up to the line and that's the way we wanted it. So now we have to join the two pieces together. And what we're going to do is simply pull this out and pull this out and we're going to glue a, pe a, a butt block behind it like that and then just glue it together. Let's see if we can get it to work. Why don't you hold that one out? 
No, hold this one out. There you go. All right, we're just going to have to slide it in there like that. And then as soon as it's there, you know. Okay, all right, let's do it. All right, just take a hot glue gun, and uh, you can smell it when it's ready. It's ready. And we're just going to put a dot here, one there, one there, one there, one there, one there, one there, and one there. Now we're going to pick the piece up and pull this out. Slide that right down in there. As soon as it's past the top, we're set. All right, now push the nails right up tight. Done deal. Just like that. Now we'll just let it sit there for a second. And it's going to be fine. So we're going to remove the nails. Try to get them back in the bucket where they belong. So we can use them over and over and over again. Next pattern. Overhead, we'll just stay away from the bottom. Couldn't here. be any faster, and it couldn't be any more accurate. How sharp is your pencil? Sharp, man. Well, then I'll let you mark the forward end. All right. And mark this forward end. I'm going to hold this down with my finger. Nice and tight. And I learned from the last plank that you have to be fairly aggressive with the pencil, otherwise you can't see it. Be careful up here. Now, I'm actually going to move the batten up on this very end a tiny bit like that before I trace the other side. Because I'm going to make that very end a little bit heavier than the pattern shows. Just like that. Now, I've got a tag right here because it wasn't fitting up against the line above it perfectly. Perfect. All the way down to here. And that's it. Not it? That looks like it, Lou. We've got our batten nailed up on top of the material. We're cutting the next plank out. That would be called a broad strike. And uh, the top of it's got a little bit of a sweep in it. And uh, this batten's really nice and broad. So it was a little bit of a struggle to get that little sweep in the end of it, but not too much. And it makes it nice and graceful. Because if you used a real narrow batten, you can get it all over the place. And it makes it tough for fitting the next plank to it. This cut on top of this plank right here, the top edge, will not be altered in any way ever. We're gonna saw it and we're gonna leave it alone. It's up to us to fit the next plank to it. Now, down here, we're fitting to the next plank, the one below it, the garbage plank, and to the rabbit up here. So it's kind of got like two cuts. One runs out here and the other one starts here and runs out and goes up forward and runs out to a point. Now, this first cut, we're gonna cut at 90 degrees. And every plank on the boat, we're going to cut 90 degrees on the very top edge. The bottom is going to be cut to a progressive bevel because it has a little bit of a progression to it. It's starting to roll right in here a little bit. So, you know, as it goes, then in one spot, the rabbit is cut a littlest bit too deep in the back. So it's just a degree or so. So we're going to match all those uh, bevels when we cut it so we won't have to fit it afterwards. Pretty simple thing to do. Let's start with this top cut and like I said this is the easy one because it's 90 degrees we don't have to change the bevel on the saw at all as we saw it. Well that was our first progressively sawn cut and uh, it worked out great. The saw is working fantastic you know, this saw is nothing new to me. I've been using it for years and years. It's never failed me. So, you know, I've just uh, revised my process a little tiny bit over the years from time to time. And uh, everything's working out fantastic. So, you know, we've got a piece of scrap right here we can take away. And I've got one more cut. I'm going to move the thing down on the bench right here. 
And this one will probably cut with a smaller batten because it's going to be a little bit more curved, I think. Well, we made our first progressive cut, and that's where the plank fit against the rabbit. And now we're going to cut the section where the plank fits against the plank before it, the garbage plank. It starts off really at three degrees on the end here, works its way down to two and a half, two, and, two degrees, one and a half, one, and down to 0.5 and 0.5 at the end. So it's got a little bit of a quick progression in here. I have to make sure that I keep up with that progression. So let's see how I make out. Well, there you have it. We've cut two planks in a matter of no time at all, really, the garbage plank, and fit that right in there. Didn't really require any fitting at all. And then we fit the next plank to it, the broad strake, and we cut the top 90 degrees, but the bottom was cut to a progressive bevel, and we put it in place and clamped it down in there, and it just fits great. You know, I may touch the end of it up a little tiny bit, and you can see a little shadow here because this one's hanging out. It's a little bit thicker than this plank right here. We're going to run it through the planer again later, but we have to, like, sculpt the back of it a little bit, tiny bit, up in the forward sections, make it round, and fit it back in. And uh, the next thing I want to show you is these things. This is really cool. I mean, you know, we struggled for quite a while trying to figure out how in the world you would put planks against this hull and clamp them in place and not have it be a frustration. Because I guess you could hold them up there and push on them like crazy if you had a bunch of people and screw them in place. But it's so nice if you can just train them in place just like that. And this does the trick. You know, uh, I remember planking um, Freedom and we were putting planks over the top of the strip plank and just like this but we started from the top down and we used poles to push them up well we decided we'd start from the bottom and go up and we had nothing to push against so you know, we tried all kinds of different ideas about wedging and all kinds of stuff or just a waste of time you know these things work great it's kind of like having a sky hook in the middle of nowhere to push against and uh, these clamps work fantastic they're bar clamps but they push as well as pull so we got them hooked up to push, and we put one end against the plank, hook the other end on this thing that we invented right here, and squeeze it up, and it holds the plank in as well as down at the same time. I think that's pretty cool. You know, we can put a couple, two or three planks on there using these in the exact same position, or we can move them up, you know, and they move so quickly. We just take one screw out, you know, it's one of the screws that holds the strip planking on, and we put uh, you know, like a construction screw holding this bracket against the hull in that hole. And uh, it doesn't ruin the hole. You can't possibly strip it or bend it or do anything wrong to it. So it works pretty good. And when we're done with it, we'll just pull that screw out and put the other screw back in the hole again, you know, and it's patched right up. So, you know, the whole thing's working out pretty good. We're going to have maybe eight of these things along so we can clamp any plank we want to the hull. And not only will it work down in this area here, it's going to work all the way across the top sides. Every plank we put on will be clamped on in this manner right here. Now, I think this is kind of different. It may be the first time it's ever been done. And, uh, you know, we're kind of proud of it, but we're, we're not too worried about that. What we're worried about is getting uh, ahead of this job, and uh, this is going to make it happen as quickly as possible.